For today's lesson, we will be discussing about inverse function. So let's define first what is an inverse function. A function g is the inverse function of f if the ordered pairs of g or the ordered pairs of f be then in reversed order. So when we say inverse function, we are just interchanging the domain or the values of our domain with the values of the range. Recall that we discussed about one-to-one -one function. So it is a one-to-one -one function if every second element is paired to only one first element. Moreover, a function has an inverse function if and only if it is one-to-one. -one. So as what we know for a one-to-one -one function, there's only one value of x to every one value of y. So if you're dealing with one-to-one -one function, then automatic it has an inverse function. So what are the steps in obtaining the inverse of a function f? So first is we change f of x to y. We interchange the variables x and y. We solve for y in terms of x. And then we change y from step 3 to f raised to negative 1 of x or inverse of f of x. So let's try with this example. Find the inverse of the function f described by the ordered pairs negative 4, 12, negative 2, 4, 0, 0, 2, 3, 4, 16. Now if you are given ordered pairs and then you have to identify the inverse of this given function, all you have to do is to interchange the values of x and y. So the values of x that we have or the domain, we have negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. And then for the range, we have 12, 4, 0, 3, and 16. If we were going to write the inverse function, so the domain now will become the range, and the range will become the domain. So it should be, so it should look like this. 12, negative 4, 4, negative 2, then we have 0, 0, we have 3, 2, and we have 16, 4. So again, what we did is we just interchanged the values of the range and the domain. So the inverse now of the given function described by the following ordered pairs is 12 negative 4, 4 negative 2, 0, 0, 3, 2, 16, 4. Now what if the equation is given and not the ordered pairs? So let's try it with this example. Find the inverse of the function f of x equals 2x minus 1. So go back to the steps that I presented a while ago. So first a thing that we have to do is to change f of x to y. So this will become now y equals 2x minus 1. Again, first step that we have to do, change f of x to y. Then after that, we have to interchange now the variables x and y. So this now will become the x. And then this variable here will become the y. So it will become x equals 2y minus 1. Again, after we change f of x to y, you interchange now the variables. So x will become y, y will become x. So next what we have to do is we have to solve for y in terms of x. Okay, so we should still have y equals. So we're going to manipulate this. So what we will do is you move 1 on the other side or negative 1 on the other side. So this will be x plus 1 equals 2y. Again, we have to solve for y in terms of x. So since this is still 2y, what we will do is we just divide both sides by 2. This will be cancelled. So we have y equals x plus 1 all over 2. And then after this, what we will do is we just have to change y with the inverse of f of x. So inverse of f of x is equal to x plus 1 all over 2. So this is now the inverse of the given function f of x equals 2x minus 1. Okay, next example. f of x equals 3x plus 2. So we'll do the same thing. We change f of x to y. So this is y equals 3x plus 2. And then after you change f of x to y, you interchange the variables x and y. So you have 
x equals 3y plus 2. And then next is we just have to solve for y in terms of x. So you move 2 on the other side. x minus 2 equals 3y. And then divide both sides by 3. So this will be cancelled. Then we have y equals x minus 2 all over 3. After you solve for y, what I will do next is you change y and then we'll write inverse of function x equals x minus 2 all over 3. So this is now the inverse of the function 3x plus 2. Another example, let's say we have f of x equals 2x plus 1 all over 3x minus 5. So again, change the f of x with y. So we have y equals 2x plus 1 all over 3x minus 5. Then after this, after you change f of x to y, we will be changing the variables. So this will become x equals 2y plus 1 all over 3y minus 5. Now, next a thing that we have to do is to uh, solve for y in terms of x. So what we will do here is, since this is this is a fraction, we're going to multiply both sides by 3y minus 5. 3y minus 5, and then also the other side. Then we have 3xy minus 5x equals, so this will be cancelled, then we just have 2y plus 1. Now since we are solving for y in terms of x, we have to isolate all of the terms with variables y on the other side, as well as terms with variable x. So now we have 3xy minus 5x equals 2y plus 1. Remember that we have to solve for y in terms of x. So that means we have to combine or put together all of the terms with variable y on one side and all the terms with variable x on the other side. So what we will do here is we can actually interchange 2y and 5x. So we put 2y on the other side and then 5x we move it on the other side so that we have both of the terms with variables y on one side. So we have here 3xy minus 2y equals, then 5x will be moved here, so that will be positive 5x plus 1. So let's just write here again, 3xy minus 2y equals 5x plus 1. Now what we will do here is, as you can see, we have 3xy and then we have 2y. Both of them have the variable y. So what we can do is, we can factor out y. Now we cannot combine this two because 3xy has a variable x. So the only thing that we can do here is to factor out y. So after you factor out y, the only thing that will be left here is 3x and then minus 2. Then we have equals 5x plus 1. Then the, last, uh, uh, then the last thing that we have to do here now is to divide both sides by 3x minus 2. So we are dividing both sides by 3x minus 2 so that we will just have the variable y here on the other side. So therefore, we have y equals 5x plus 1 all over 3x minus 2. Now after this, we just have to change y to inverse of f of x. So equals 5x plus 1 all over 3x minus 2. For our last example, let's have a word problem. So a car salesman receives a monthly salary of 12,000 pesos and a commission of 5% of his total monthly sales. Write a function for the salesman's total earnings each month and find its inverse. So first thing that we have to do here is, of course, to write a function that represents the income of the salesman. So from the problem, what we know is that he receives a salary of 12,000 pesos. And in addition to that, he also receives a commission of 5% of his total monthly sales. 
So what we can do here is we can set X as his total monthly sales. And now let's uh, write the function in terms of X. So first is 12,000 pesos. So 12,000. So this is the salary that the salesman is getting. And then in addition to 12,000, he also receives 5% of the total monthly sales. So again, we set X as his total monthly sales. That means we have to multiply 5% with X or in decimal 5% is 0 0.05. So this will be 0 0.05 X. So that means we're just getting 5% of the total monthly sales. So this is now the function that represents the salary or the total earnings of the car salesman. Now we have to identify the inverse of this given function. So let's change now f of x to y. Then we have equals 12,000 plus 0.05x. After we change f of x to y, we now change the variable. So this will become x equals 12,000 plus 0.05y. And then again, what we will do is we just have to solve for y in terms of x. So first is we can move 12,000 on the other side. So x minus 12,000 equals 0.05y. And then all we have to do now is to divide both sides by 0.05. And then this will be cancelled. Therefore, we have y equals x minus 12,000 divided by 0.05. So this is now the inverse. So last thing that we have to do is to just change y and then write inverse of f of x x minus 12,000 all over 0 0.05 and then we now have the final answer here so this is the original function and then this one now is the inverse function so that's it for today i hope you learned something about inverse of function and see you next time